times are interesting indeed, much like our foreign relations today, through the selfless dedication of the hardworking men and women of the Department of Foreign Affairs, the Philippines was able to immerse in the shifting tides of a changing world without compromising our national interest. These are excerpts from the speech of President Duterte that was supposed to be delivered here this morning. And I want you to hear his words, not my words, but the words of the President. Despite the taxing job of balancing our national interest with foreign relations, the DFA was also able to ensure the welfare of our compatriots above, uh, abroad, especially our overseas Filipino workers. Your work in facilitating the amnesty and massive repatriation of over 4,000 OFWs in Saudi Arabia, four of which were already on the death row, is truly commendable. These accomplishments are testament to the dedication of our foreign service professionals in serving our country and our people. We therefore take this occasion to honor the men and women of the DFA who have taken an extra mile in promoting our national interest here and abroad. Yesterday, po, some of you were there, some were able to monitor. We had a trilateral meeting with uh, Indonesia and Malaysia. And part of the interesting uh, discussion was how people can be so passionate about religion but can sometimes totally miss the point. So that is why in the past, Christianity, or in the name of Christ, wars were waged, torture was done, and terrorism was done in the name of Christ. And in the modern days, people believing to be true believers of Islam have also brought their belief and their actions to the extreme by doing terrorist acts. But in the past, these were not, not, not true Christian believers, as well as in the present, these are not true believers of Islam. Why? Because they missed the point. Let me share with you a verse that you often here, regardless of your, your religion. Yung verse po na, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever shall believe shall not die but shall have eternal life. Now, don't focus on the religion and don't focus on, on um, the message of that verse per se. But just imagine that it was a father telling a son this statement. What's the first thing that you will notice? The first thing that you will notice is that you have a father who is willing to give his son. And tell me, parents who are here today, aren't your children the most precious treasure you have in this world? So meaning, from that verse, regardless of our religion, we believe, we believe in different uh, religions would believe in different names sometimes for God, but we believe in any religion that God always gives us the best. That is simply His way. That is why I read to you today excerpts of the President's speech because I know in his heart he believes how professional, how good, how the best and the brightest are here in DFA. Of course, he cannot say it that way. I remember in Moscow when the crisis erupted and I had to face the media together with our colleagues in the cabinet, it slipped out of my mouth na the best and the brightest and the most professional are in DFA. Sama nang tingin sa akin ng ibang secretaries. So, and uh, Secretary Lopez uh, whispered, some, some, some. Kasi, <laughs> Some naman nasa kanila din, no? and Secretary Teo was also there of the tourism. And of course, we have great people, some of the best uh, people in government. But in reality, even when I was a legislator in my 25 years in politics, we always pointed to the DFA no? as above the rest. Diba? as part of the best of the best. So, ilagay na lang natin sa part of the best of the best. Kasi meron din best 
uh, meron din napakagaling sa ibang departments. But wherever you look at it, in research, in preparation, in time that's given to work, in sacrifices, uh, yung iba kasama pamilya, yung iba uh, hindi makasama pamilya, yung iba palipat-lipat ang pamilya, that's been a hallmark of DFA. So my, my main message to you today is that if the President recognizes that we are one of the best, if not the best, if the Lord commands us, again, different religions, always God tells His people, do your best. No. So allow me to try to put words to what best can mean for us in the DFA. Let's let letter B be bold. It's a time for boldness. Nung araw, newspapers, when the printing press was, uh, was uh, invented, you had the public opinion. So you had the majority opinion and the minority opinion. Diba? So if you had 20 million, 50 million, 100 million Filipinos, ano ba tingin ng majority? Ano tingin ng minority? Now we have what? 105, 110 million Filipinos. But we have 133 million cell phones in the Philippines. We have more cell phones than people. Normal naman yan, dahil kayo mismo, if kapkapan ka namin ngayon, some of you will have two or three cell phones in your pockets or your bags. No? But the reason I mention this is because in your cell phone is social media, our apps, our, our things, uh, creations uh, in our times to make us connect. So ngayon, wala na po nung majority-minority opinion through Facebook, to Twitter, to Instagram, every single Filipino can express themselves. So kung dati may majority, minority opinion, baka may third party opinion, ngayon kung 110 million Filipinos, you will have 110 plus 1 opinions. Bakit plus 1? Minsan ang mga abogado will give you 2 opinions, hindi lang isa. So that's the reality of our days. So what does that mean? That means it's a time to be bold. It's a time for you uh, to say na, I may be ambassador, I may be congen, I may be a new officer, I might not be an officer yet, I might be a local hire, but my opinion matters. My ideas matters. How many of our people are looking up at us and waiting for us to solve problems when ang nakakaalam naman ng solusyon sa kanila? So, bringing to the letter E, two words come in to my mind, letter E. First is to empower. Unless we empower our people, they cannot solve problems uh, for us. I forgot who told me this yesterday. Yesterday, in some of the conversations, sabi, Sir, pag nasa gobyerno tayo, kailangan, we are solutions looking for problems. Tama nga naman, di ba? We should go through our assignments and find out ano problema and how can we be uh, um, part of the solution. The other E is excellence. Diba? Kaya ang, ang tingin talaga nila sa DFA, you know, I said whether we make the speeches, our, our memos, our note-taking, excellent parate. But we have to live up to that. So yesterday, I had the heart to art with uh, Assistant Secretary Frank and told him, and by the way, I pity whoever gets assigned to consular. Because alam naman natin kung gaano kahirap at madlang people ika nga ang kaharap mo and how many millions of Filipinos are we serving to the consular. No? But I told Frank and he agreed with me. Sabi ko, Frank, alam mo kung lahat ng ibang services ng DFA, eto sa gobyerno, dito DFA. Pagdating sa passports, at least passports, no? but other consular matters also, Eto ang gobyerno, pantay lang tayo. Di ba? Meaning, um, halimbawa, research or sasalubong kayo sa airport sa Secretary of Finance, sa Executive Secretary, Secretary of Tourism. Pag taga DFA ang sumalubong tapos nagtanong, talagang pasok sa mind nila. Iba yung level nitong, nitong kausap ko. Iba yung preparation. Iba yung alam niya. Pag sinabi yung pakitawagan sa ganito, hindi na sinasabi, Sir, sandali, kunin ko yung number. Nandun na sa telepono niya. Iba yung, yung level of readiness and excellence ng taga-DFA. But when it comes to passports, for example, are we any different from, L, L, any different from LTO? Are we any different from um, 
um, from uh, firearms licensing sa krame, di ba? All of that, alam ko may problema, and it's not usually the problem only of the head. So yesterday, before I got my data captured uh, for my diplomatic passport, dahil gamit ko pa yung luma ko, Frank and I went around. There were two people who were waiting in line with their number to find out why their passport wasn't ready that day. Why were they in line? Because dun sa harap, sinabihan sila na ma'am, hindi ready yung passport mo, pero kumuha ka ng number muna, pumila ka, para malaman kung bakit hindi. So, nag-usap kami ni, ni Assistant Secretary Frank and said, hindi ba pwedeng dun pa lang sa harap, may telepono na sila at tumawag sila dun, bakit wala passport nito? Para hindi na natin i-hassle yung, yung tao. And I'm sure if I call Frank now here, he will tell you a dozen more stories from Cebu, from Clark, from Mega World, from ano. And of course, there are also stories of how OFWs akala hindi aabot, matatanggal na, pero tinulungan ng taga-consular, uh, nagka, um, uh, nakuha nila in time. May, may good stories, but remember the, the, the bad stories, di ba parang sa OFWs eh? Napakaliit ng porsyento ng abuse. Pero ang problema, tao yun, hindi statistic. So kahit sabihin mong 1%, 0.5%, 0.1% ang abuse, we will be judged not on the number of those that are not abused and that we take we have taken care of. We will be judged by the number of those who are abused and how we responded. Were we proactive? Uh, if no, how can we be proactive? If we were not, if we were proactive, bakit nangyari pa rin to? How do we solve their problem? No? And I can tell you a num uh, many, many more anecdotes, and I'm sure all of you can tell me anecdotes. No? But siguro, if Frank can come up here today and, and say something, he will tell me, Sir, empower us. So let me tell you now, on our 119th anniversary, and our countdown, going to our 120th anniversary next year, submit to the office of the secretary how we can empower you. What are the handcuffs? Ano po yung mga kadena? What are the chains no? that have chained you from making decisions by yourself and being solutions looking for problems? Kasi it's unfair for us to tell you you can do better pero gusto niyong gawin at hindi niyo magawa na walang okay namin. Of course, it's always, there's a part that's always subject to the availability of funds. And when I first met um, Assistant Secretary Atel, parati siyang prim and proper at parating parang Mona Lisa yung smile. But the last week na we were meeting, nakikita ko mas wide na yung smile niya kasi nagkakalinaw na yung budget natin. So continue to pray for that. So, yes, there are things that we can empower you with, but there are things na kailangan ng budget, eh. di ba? And <clears throat> without that budget, you will not be able to accomplish what you want. S is service. We have to be service-oriented. Not only sa OFWs, not only sa consular. So, kanina, usap kami ng konti ni Secretary Manalo at saka ni uh, Yusek Dondi and told them, no, let's make some plans. Wag natin hintayin yung economic team or transport team. How do we, let's not wait for the PCO or the spokesman. You know, how, how do we make representations around the world that, you know, we are not violators of human rights, we uphold human rights, we are protecting Filipinos, uh, we are fighting terrorism, we're open for business, di ba? So, let's not wait for their expertise. Tayo mismo. We can be, and I know many of the ambassadors and many of the missions want to do this. And kayo dito sa home office, you also want to do this. That's why <clears throat> I, I have to have the meeting first with um, with uh, the engineering and the back and user uh, lakanali. But uh, I'm not really in favor of retrofitting this building because I think the DFA deserves a much much modern building design for modern day diplomacy no <clears throat> but even if 
even if I plead and use all of my charm sa Congress and sa Senate and sa DBM, it will not happen if they don't think we deserve it. So don't get me wrong. They think we deserve the best. But minsan, yung close sa'yo o yung, yung in-expect mong the best, di ba? Um, you take for granted. Growing up, my sister, lahat ng awards na sa kanya. Valedictorian, every quarter, pinakmata. She graduated high school at 14. Uh, well, birthday niya is March. She graduated 15. She skipped a grade 2 dahil accelerate siya. She finished college ng uh, 18 years old, uh, cum laude. Philippine volleyball team. May baksak pa siyang isa dahil nakaaway niya teacher, pero ano pa rin siya? Um, um, cum laude. So one time, uh, I got good grades. Not great, but good. My, my dad nagbigay ng pang blowout. So my sister said, Dad, lahat naman ng grading ko at lahat ng ano, magaling. bakit nang bibigyan si Alan and why can he treat his friends na maganda yung grade niya? Sabi niya, eh, Pia, expected ko naman sa'yo na maganda grades mo. Eh. Diba? Eh, ngayon, nabigla ako na maganda grades ni Alan. Eh. Diba? And my youngest brother, Lino, who passed through the same transition, mas magagaling ang mga kaitano na babae kasi sa mga kaitano na lalaki, got confused. Sabi niya, bakit si ate pinapagalitan pag may below 90? Bakit ako, trinitreat na ako pag may 80? Diba? So, and of course, I was the kuya and I had to explain to him because I experienced the same thing. So, if we are the valedictorians among the departments, it doesn't mean we will have the highest uh, budget or that they will give us what we deserve. It also means they expect so much from us that sometimes we will be taken for granted. So, that's why, you know, we have to uh, show them what one peso, one more peso can do for them, not for us. Diba? Every time they see that giving us more resources is actually giving themselves an easier job. No? So for the military, they want to modernize uh, the military. Now that they see that the DFA is doing everything with the countries who are willing to help, diba? nagkakaroon sila ng affinity ngayon sa uh, DFA. Ngayon na nakikita ng economic team na hindi tayo bara-bara sa military just because they want X or Y. But we're also concerned how much will it cost? Is it the best terms? Do we, is it better if it comes from this country or that? And they see the ambassadors, the assistant secretaries, the USEC, the rank and file caring for it. Diba? It's a signal to them. Give us more because you get more. And let me end with the T. Transparency. We are in a democracy. We have a very strong leader, President Duterte. There's no doubt how strong a leader he is. But take, take a second look. Hindi ba he has been so far the most democratic president after EDSA? Siguro sans uh, President um, Ramos. What do you mean by that? It's president nominates his secretaries, but he leaves it to CA. Whether you will pass it right away, or whether ida down nyo at ayaw nyo. Diba? He talks harshly about hindi ko susundin Supreme Court, etc. Ganyan. But then, he comes up with statements that, no, that's the court I will have to follow. Because 110 million Filipinos tayo. Diba? When I was talking to an American advisor of uh, the U.S. Senate, sabi ko sa kanya, you know, when the President says, I will eat you, Abu Sayyaf, he is not talking to the media, he's not talking to the businessman, he's not talking to you and me. He's talking to the terrorists. Because that's the language they understand. But all Filipinos know that President Duterte is not a cannibal. So how can he eat them? No? And you know, I'm surprised by his answer. Sabi niya, no sir, secretary, don't get me wrong, that's okay if you speak like that's a terrorist. So sa kanila, pag sa drugs, harsh ka magsalita, human rights violation. Pero pag sa terrorist, harsh ka magsalita. Diba? Hindi. Why? Transparency. No matter what your form of government, you are accountable to your people and to the people around the world. And it so happens sa US and parts of EU, yung about drugs, they're more concerned about the human rights aspect, the health aspect, etc. 
Pagdating sa terrorism, there's so much fear, there's so much concern, there's so much um, whatever adverb uh, that fits, no? Um, that they're willing for people to, to speak much harshly about it, no? So let me just remind everyone here that we are bound to continue to be transparent. And when you're transparent, you're accountable. So let me stop there. Let me thank the President for his faith and confidence sa buong BFA. I didn't read na yung buong uh, speech niya dahil dapat yung siya o yung proxy niya. But since we abbreviated our, our program, no? But you get the point eh. The point is the President does believe that we are the best. And when people believe you're the best, they expect you to do great things. So ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in the Department of Foreign Affairs, from the 119th to the 120th anniversary, this one year, let us show the rest of the departments. Let us show the Filipino people. Let us show the world, let us show God that we can do our best and that we can accomplish great things for our people together. Happy anniversary at magandang magandang hapon po sa inyo.